all right what's going on there folks good evening it's the earth master here in person well behind the mic that is on this beautiful tuesday evening june 14 2022 is the date holy smokes we're in the future 7 35 p.m california time latest quake shows a uh, looks like a 2.0 earthquake into the area of nevada nevada eastern crest there of the sierra nevada looks like they're on the globe so uh before we get into the earthquake activity i want to give a big shout out to these folks right here these super fans um, i told them i'd give them shout outs these are the members here on the channel still in socal 42 i'm jesse julie uh, seismic koi wolf robert uh robert two roberts okay that was not a mistake <laughs> we got two roberts right there uh the fly lady john uh, we got Jay Quintes, 347. Appreciate you guys. Albert Sanchez, Jr., and Dolores. Those are my members here of the channel, and we appreciate every single one of those folks. And uh, a couple of those guys coming up on the 30-day mark. Looks like 21 days for quite a few folks there. Uh, as we advance towards the, uh, the past month or so, or, or the next month, the icons will change for some of those future... Uh, members there so look forward to that uh, little event there and uh, if you're interested in becoming a member of the channel uh, we definitely would appreciate it we do provide some uh, little perks and extras to those people that decide to join so no arm twisting but uh, if you feel like it you're more than welcome let me tell you a 3.2 earthquake here within the last hour showing up down here east of this the um, ridgecrest region region see that uh, earthquake showing up here on the map looks like a very shallow earthquake a 3.2 well rest uh well west or east i should say well east of the ridgecrest area Let's see if i can spit that out correctly uh i got a barbecue going outside right now so maybe maybe a little bit of the uh inhaling of the smoke is not helping me <laughs> maybe who knows uh looks like prior to that a little microquake at uh point eight still very shallow at about one kilometer there following that 3.2 there so it's a little bit of abnormal activity east of the uh what is it argus mountain area coso range all this activity though is very volcanic uh as far as historical activity goes but uh Man, it's well, well east of the uh, Ridgecrest area and that fracture zone that we normally look for. So this just happening here, folks, within the last uh, few minutes or so. Since then, also, we got a 2.0 kicking up here around the Walker area of California. This is the eastern part of the Sierra Nevada, a 2.0 in the Antelope Valley area. So we're seeing a return of West Coast, uh, West Coast pressure movement as this update uh, just started uh, prior to that in the last couple days we've seen pretty quiet activity uh, at least far as any um, movement goes look at this up here what do we got here in nevada when did this kick up it looks like uh, within the mix of all this activity uh, we got some movement out here near the lovelock lovelock nevada area 13 kilometer deep 1.1 so when we see the map light up in red circles, obviously we need to uh, look at what's going on here, right? Obviously we're seeing a pretty good sign of increase in activity here along this area of California and Nevada right now. The North American plate showing uh, some seismically active um, movement currently. So uh, watching that pretty closely. Uh, there's no major movement, but, uh, you know, when it's in, in this type of format here, this broad of a scale, uh, obviously there's some good movement uh, taking place currently. Uh, throughout the rest of Northern California, some spotty activity along the coastal range. We've seen this earlier today and after, uh, well, this afternoon time frame uh, around the uh, coastal fault systems. There we got the uh, Makama Fault and also the Bartlett Springs Fault System that kind of runs up here north to south along the coast range and a couple other smaller faults in there as well. But uh, those 
area seen a couple microquakes. Uh, further south of the Garlock Fault, um, not a whole lot of movement cur currently, I should say. Um, we did have some activity off the coast of Los Angeles, off the coast of Santa Monica, a couple small microquakes there. Uh, near the Malibu, Malibu Beach area, uh, aside from that, most of the activity has been inland along the San Jacinto Fault Zone and the Elsinore Fault area. No major swarmings kicking up, or major swarm kicking up here around the Salton Sea area currently. Uh, a little spotty activity throughout Texas. Oklahoma and Kansas, though, looks pretty quiet. Uh, aside from the East Coast, nothing going on out there. We got one little earthquake here in the, along the New Madrid zone. This one uh, striking much, much, much earlier. Um, actually, that was from last night, if I believe. If I'm correct, yep, 12, uh, 614 UTC time. So that's a late night yesterday earthquake showing up there on the map. Yellowstone National Park, folks, There's uh, looks like things are toning down a little bit. This is an area I kind of want to focus my topic on tonight because uh, there's been a lot of flooding up there in the Yellowstone area. These guys have seen quite a bit of uh, rainfall, right? It happens. We're getting the wind shift or a, a jet stream shift uh, that pulls up the Gulf moisture from the south, uh, along with the colder air to the north, and we get these major thunderstorms. That, uh, well, I think if anyone's been in a thunderstorm, it rains pretty heavily, right? We're talking about four inches of rain over just a day period here in Yellowstone National Park. Now these are all peaks and mountains and little canyons right and where do you guys think all of this rainfall goes it goes down into those rivers those streams those canyons and what happens when you have a massive amount of pressure from the water you get erosion right you get erosion of the river or the creek beds the creek banks and anything that's along it um could go with it i've seen the uh employee housing up there around yellowstone go into the uh, creek into the river um, so this is unprecedented in terms of rainfall and in terms of uh, severe weather up here uh, but I've seen a couple uh, I, I would say one or two channels out here kind of fear-mongering on the Yellowstone uh, news story right now this is a weather event this is not volcanic activity okay um, and I, I, you, got, you got to think about common sense here in terms of Yellowstone. Yes, it is a super volcano. Yes, there are geysers throughout the park. Yes, there is sulfur dioxide and emissions uh, and sulfur and whatnot in the air, but there is nothing out of the abnormal readings currently uh, that would contribute um, all this flooding and whatnot to a, to a uh, volcanic eruption. A lot of people tune into this and they fear monger. Oh my gosh, there's, there's, this can't be right. They're closing down Yellowstone. They're hiding something. Okay, guys. If you've been watching this channel long enough, you know I don't fear monger here on this channel. I don't. I, and I hate it. And I will call it out when I see it. I won't name that person that's calling this out or that's uh, been saying this. But I will uh, bring it up in my updates here. So anyone and everyone is able and capable of going to all of these stations here. Now I want to I want to point out a little bit of activity here, or at least instruments that everyone's entitled to look at in the public. If you want to check out camera systems here at the park, go for it. If you want to check out GPS measurements in the park, it's listed here. Gas emissions, seismic activity, temperature, tilt meter. Guys, it's all there. Think about this for a moment. If this volcano, if this area was about ready to erupt or whatnot, or we've seen seismic increase in, in magma below the ground, wouldn't we obviously see a major increase in gas emissions, earthquake activity? Just because there's swarms here in the last couple weeks doesn't mean the volcano is going to blow. Let's go ahead and check out. I want to. I hate to be the bearer of good news to those that love to hear fake news, but I... I'm an honest person, folks. I don't lie to people. I hate liars, and I hate people that fear monger. And uh, let's go ahead and check out a gas emission station up here 
around the uh, Yellowstone National Park, okay? Air temperature, air relative humidity, barometric, uh, barometric pressure, wind speed, all that good stuff. CO2, SO2 ratio, sulfur di dioxide, right? When you expect from a volcano, look at that right now. Pretty calm and mellow. There's other stuff you can check out here besides that. Uh, carbon dioxide, right? If you're thinking that there's a major volcanic eruption in the process or things are heating up, the roads are melting. The roads aren't melting, folks. The roads are eroding away next to canyons due to heavy rainfall of unprecedented amounts. This is not a volcanic activity. This is purely weather related. Look at the CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide emissions here. Do you see any major uptick, folks? Do you see variables, ups and downs? Typical readings? Absolutely. I'm not seeing any abnormal uh, gas emissions from any of this stuff. Uh, H H2O, CO2, all within average ranges. I showed you sul uh, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. I sound like a scientist. It's like all these things are definitely related to a volcano, right? But if this thing was about ready to blow or we were seeing abnormal conditions in terms of major magma movement under the ground melting roads, we would see these things skyrocketing off the charts. And they're not. Carbon dioxide, folks. Look at that. So if you don't want to take my word for it, go check it out yourself, guys. But you can't listen to someone on the YouTube channel saying that, yeah, roads are melting. I had a friend up there in, in the Yellowstone, and they said that the road was melting off into the canyon. Well, <laughs> the road's not melting off into the canyon. The road's eroding away into the canyon due to uh, mudslides. That's what happens when you have heavy, heavy-duty rain. Come on. Where's the common sense? Where is the common sense? Please don't listen to that nonsense. It's a bunch of BS. I hate, I hate to bring this stuff up, but I don't like it when people fear monger. And that's why I'm here, folks. That's why a lot of people turn to this channel for non-BS facts. All right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Yellowstone's about ready to blow because of weather-related events. Good Lord, man. What the heck is wrong with people? Okay, I'm going to move on because it's pissing. It's kind of making me mad a little bit. Uh, temperature. You can check out temperature charts. You can check out anything on this graph, folks, for your own. Don't let someone else point it up here and, and say, this is doing that. This is doing that. Graphs would tell you, obviously, that uh, there's some abnormal conditions and there's not. Okay, weather-related events. Weather. Weather. W-E-A-T-H-E-R, which I wish we had some of right now. I wish we had a couple downpours. We got half of the rain that Yellowstone received within the last couple days. It would probably put us out of the drought here in California. Okay, that's an unprecedented amount of rainfall. Not associated with a super volcano. Seismic activity, dim. Not a whole lot going on there, folks, okay? I just, I, I'm just a little irritated because I don't like people that pull the, 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 uh, the fear mongering card. I have a I have a bunch of business cards that I give out to random people, uh, my viewers, or just random people in general. And on the back, I have in bold letters on my business card: YouTuber without the fear mongering. That's exactly what it says on my business card. Let's move on past the BS. Oh, goodness. I, I get worked up. I hate getting worked up. I really do. I can feel my blood pressure going. But it's okay, right? Everything is good. Yellowstone's not going to blow. These events are not related to any of that um, nonsense. Oh, man. Goodness. I don't even know where to begin after that. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. All right. Let's go ahead and check out Alaska, shall we? The Aleutian Trench. Oh no, it's a subduction zone. Okay, well, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I promise you I'm not. A little activity in a major subduction zone. 
very typical, very normal folks. Nothing is abnormal here along the Aleutian Trench. Nothing abnormal currently along the West Coast or Yellowstone. Um, some quiet activity around the uh, Pacific Ring of uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, right? Northwestern section throughout the Philippine Plate. <laughs> I wonder how many people I'm gonna uh, make mad tonight. I, I don't even know. Should that be a should that be a goal of mine every night? No, because I don't like irritating people. I like providing facts and information to people. I don't want to get people rattled up. I want to produce facts, and those that don't want facts. Um, well, I guess stay blind and listen to those that tell you lies, but I don't like liars. Who who wants a liar? Who loves liars out here? Four point, uh, what do we got here off the coast of Japan? A 4.4 into the Japan Trench. It's been relatively quiet throughout the rest of the afternoon and evening there, folks. Um, some movement out here around Papua New Guinea, although the majority of this activity from late last night, this morning, uh, time frame. Woo! My goodness and a little spotty activity throughout the uh, china region himalaya area eastern afghanistan we did see one earthquake way down here into the iran area just offshore a 4.7 uh that one striking um way early this morning so a lot of this activity believe it or not the majority of this activity you see here is all old at least far as recent events go um, and that kind of leads me to believe that some activity is definitely ramping up here around the North American plate. That's not fear mongering. This is just facts here, 100% uh, facts. And then, oh goodness, I got, I got it. I got to go forward. Let's move forward, Earthmaster. Come on, let's go forward, forward. Uh, South America region seeing low activity along the Peru Chile Trench. It looks like. Um, couple of these earth. Well. well yeah, two of these. We had a 4.7 earlier this afternoon, super deep into the Peru Chile Trench, 193 kilometers, and also a 4.2. Uh, very recent here within the last hour at 105 kilometers. So things kind of ramping up here in this area that we've seen hardly any activity. It's been very quiet in terms of any large scale movement here, at least recently. Recently, I'm talking last week or so. So uh, we'll see how that uh, adjusts. Puerto Rico Trench, one earthquake out here around the Dominican Republic, a 4.1 at 10 kilometers. Aside from that, typical earthquake activity. Aside from this little inland earthquake, got a 2.7 near the... Uh, ooh, man, I'll let you guys be the judge of pronouncing that. Uh, but it's pretty deep. It's a 97 kilometer deep 2.7 in this area of Puerto Rico. Uh, what else we got? Um, let's see here. Aside from California, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map here. I've been all kind of out of whack since I've seen uh, uh, some of that fear mongering earlier. It's zip zero, not a going on around the Cascadia uh, volcanic seismicity map here around Mount St. Helens. Earlier this morning, we've seen a couple of small spikes. Um, of course, uh, nothing of abnormal activity you know there's always always earthquake activity at volcanoes for the most part in terms of microquake activity there's fault systems all around volcanoes a couple here within the last hour um, looking at the afternoon time frame let's go ahead and see if we can pull this up yeah about the same folks uh, only a handful so na no major movement going on here at uh, mount st helens these solar weather activity has been uh continuing uh, for the most part, around the sun, on the Earth side of the sun, we're getting pretty awesome development here. Now, this is not fear monger, and this is just facts here. These things can pop off in M flare or X flare, depending on the uh, complex uh, complexity of the magnetic fields of these individual sunspots. But these things are rapidly developing, including 3034 over here, and a newly uh, um, named sunspot 3035. So things are cooking on the sun literally uh, and they're sparking uh, in terms of sparking i mean they're kind of crackling like popcorn if you will they're getting very active in terms of um well irregular activity right seeing all these seas pop up here these sea flares kind of like popcorn getting ready for the big show uh and and the sun right now definitely uh crackling with some sea flares right now the sea flare threat 
Uh, let's see what these guys are setting this at. It looks like 30, 32, 30, 31 uh, potential. I think 30, 30 has a possibility, though. They only have it at 5% chance. But 30, 31, 30, 32 sunspots have the highest uh, possibility. And these are going to be these right here, 30, 32. 30, 31 is right in this area. Very close magnetic field. And all of these sunspots are di almost directly facing Earth here. We got one brave soul or brave sunspot directly in the center of the disk. We don't see that too often, but maybe this will be the one that will provide us with some awesome solar flares here pretty soon. We'll see, right? Either way, things are definitely getting cooking on the sun. And, uh, you know, that's a fact. That's definitely a fact. No fear mongering, folks. Uh, we're expecting a little bit later tonight with the... Uh, uh, G1 class storm probability, <coughs> excuse me, looking at 65% chance of higher latitude uh, roars. We'll see if that kicks up right now. KP index right around three. Um, <coughs> excuse me, let me grab a drink real quick. It is super dry out here. Um, earlier, uh, we had about 92 degrees outside, and um. 9% humidity. 9%. Okay, now a lot of folks would be like, oh, that's great. That's great. So it doesn't feel as hot. No, <laughs> it, feel, it feels hot, but it's dry. The wind sucks the life out of you. The moisture sucks the life out of the ground, out of the plants, out of the trees. Honestly, folks, I'm a big moisture fan. I want moisture in the air when it comes to the heat. So I'll take... The heat and humidity down in the south any day over the desert air here in California. I'm not a big fan of this desert stuff. Trust me. I know it sounds weird, but you know what? I'm weird and I'm not normal. So, <laughs> might as well get that out right now. All right. What do we got? So, any coronal holes? We did have some coronal hole activity, and I believe that's associated with tonight's event. Uh, far as the raising of the KP index is there. There's a couple of coronal holes that have been facing Earth, providing us with some uh, high uh, wind speed from as far as solar stream goes, solar wind speed. Right now, looking at the chart, looks like we're starting to update, uh, update a little bit here on the speed, along with the density kind of elevating slightly. But I don't think we've seen a peak of that uh, solar wind that's coming in at, at us. That could provide us with the uh, G1 storm. So we'll watch and wait for that to kick up. All right, guys. How long did we... Uh, 22 minutes. I kept it under 30 minutes. Man, that's good, right? I get complaints if it's too short. Complaints if it's too long. Complaints if I talk facts. Complaints if I uh, call people out on fear-mongering. All I know, folks, if you want facts and if you want truth... And the no BS story, then stick to this channel. I mean, I, I try to provide everyone links and graphs and true data from the sources when it comes to events like Yellowstone. It's a, it's, it's an unprecedented event there at Yellowstone, and what happened uh, yesterday and day before with the with the heavy rainfall, but thunderstorms thunderstorms in the mountains you got all that rain coming down all at once what do you expect is going to happen there's going to be enormous amount of mud slides rock slides and the creeks are going to be overloaded because all of that moisture funnels down into the ground into the creeks and then pretty soon you got a raging river and you get these uh, unfortunate events like we see in there at yellowstone where um you know, little buildings and stuff like that are, are uh, being swept away. Erosion. Water is crazy. But we see it all the time. We see it in the desert, sometimes during the monsoonal moisture, uh, monsoonal season. But man, please, guys, don't let people tell you that this is all because Yellowstone is heating up below. Okay, please don't. That's all I have to say on that topic, folks. So do with it. Take it, take it with you. I planted the seed. If you come back, you come back. If you don't, you don't. But uh, I'm here to kind of plant the fact seed into your head and the true seed and let you know, guys, that there's nothing going on at Yellowstone National Park that's super volcano-related. There's nothing brewing 
getting ready to blow and no roads are melting. I can't believe that. Somebody would say that to fear monger people like that. I got, I got, check this out guys. And I have to kind of mention this on the channel, right? I still got, uh, still got about five minutes before we go over the 30 minute mark. So someone, a couple people said, oh my God, I can't believe you um, fear mongered on this channel. You, you made clickbait on your channel just to get people to click on your channel. And this was over a video I did on the Cascadia subduction zone scenario, a 9.0 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone scenario. Okay. People saying, oh my gosh, I thought there was a 9.0 earthquake on the, on the Cascadia. How dare you? I'm unsubscribing. Thank you. Thank you to the folks that stood up and and protected this channel and uh, defended this channel from that uh, those couple of viewers there. Those guys you guys will definitely be rewarded, I think, here. Um, I might provide you guys with some stuff here pretty soon. People that speak up on behalf of this channel are super worthy, I think, in terms of uh, uh, getting compensated. Uh, Because I, I, I just I'm I'm just in awe as to how someone would think that I claim that there was a 9.0 earthquake on the Cascadia just by saying um, about a scenario. A scenario you have to read comprehension uh, comprehension skills are a must I think in certain uh, titles right here on the YouTube channel. But I'm just I, I I don't know. It's been one heck of a day, folks. It's been one heck of a day. Um, and sometimes maybe I shouldn't read all my comments, but I do. I go through here and read every single comment, the good and the bad ones. Maybe some people want attention, you know, but, uh, it's just, I, I don't know. It's pretty crazy that people would, would, uh, you know, assume that I'm fear mongering just because I say 9.0 earthquake on the Cascadia scenario. That's almost like saying, what if an asteroid hit the Earth? Oh my gosh, you said there's an asteroid hitting the Earth. You made me click on your video. Yeah, it's just people. People! Do you get it? People. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here before I go cuckoo. A little bit more crazy than I should be right now. Missy Mimi's not here to stop me. Oh, Missy Mimi's, you better hurry up and get home real soon. All right, guys, have a good night. We're closing in really close on 75,000 subscribers minus the one or two because the fear mongering, supposedly. And uh, we're giving away prizes, folks. I'm giving away shirts and some hats and also some tsunami deposits from the Oregon coastline that we uh, uh, dug up um, last year when me and Missy Mimi's went up to the uh, coast there to find um, the 1700 deposit from tsunami from the uh, 1700 tsunami up there along the Oregon coastline. So that's a little little hint of what we're giving away. So I need we need to give it away soon. But we need to get more subscribers. We're 1,000 1,000 away from 75k. So let's make this happen, folks. And how you make it happen? The best way you can make it happen is by sharing this video. That's all. Sharing, liking, uh, subscribing as well. Do you have to donate? Absolutely not. You do not have to donate at all here on this channel. But we appreciate definitely the donations. It goes right back into the channel um, for uh, on location events and whatnot. And of course, quality right here. Streaming in 4K, 60 frames a second, nonstop, 24 seven. Those live streams have been up for, uh, well, almost a month now. I did have some issues with it uh, a couple months back. Someone hacking into it, trying to shut down the channel, but uh, we think we put a cap on it. So, all right, I'm at 29 minutes and 30 seconds. So I am going to end this video. Again, we appreciate everyone out there. Subscribe and um, yeah, have a good night, everyone. We'll chat you guys a little bit later. Peace out. <laughs>